This is Richard back at you. Today is the day that we want to thank a lot of people. Uh, we want to thank one of them for sure. Milwaukee, you guys are awesome. Uh, we're glad to be using your guys' tools in, in all of our videos and shows. They work really nice. Trent's been using them from day one, and he's got me a believer. Believe me, these, these guys work. We're excited to use them. Also, I want to thank another person. I want to thank Chris over at Transmission Specialties. These guys right here are awesome. They supply us with a lot of our high performance uh, parts and stuff, our 350s, 400s, our 480Es and all that type stuff. Here's their number here. Chris over at Trans Specialties. They hooked me up. They got me four, or excuse me, eight 480E uh, billet shafts in that just come in so we can get all of our 480Es built. We got three rear lube style. We got one front lube style. We're excited to get these in and get these trainees built for the customers. Uh, it's been a couple weeks. We've been waiting on them. Also, I want to thank Mr. Williams for the ghost gloves. I've never seen this before, but I want to try it. Uh, it says it's good for dirt, grease, paint, epoxies, gasoline, all that type of stuff. So it's got to be good for solvents, you'd think, right, guys? So, Mr. Williams, I appreciate it. We're going to try this and see uh, how it works in solvents. So I'm, I'm really curious, and uh, we'll let you guys know how this works. So, also, I want to thank Lori and Missy. Lori and Missy, Annie, you're so special. You get something every day in the, in the mail. Lori, Missy, we want to thank you very much. Missy, for sure. Annie's going to enjoy a mink and Trent can barely get it, get this toy away from her right now. So it's like, don't attack me. <laughs> but we want to thank you very much, Lori, for that. Okay, we got Mr. Jason Duffy's 96 Dodge 12 valve in the house today. It's got a 241 DLD transfer case. Now, it's got the splines almost stripped out in the front right here where the transmission slides in and attaches. And then the transmission is over here and the output shaft coming out of the overdrive section is almost stripped too. So we can, I'll walk over and give you a little idea what this looks like. You can see here this shaft here is almost totally stripped. So if you get over here in the transfer case part of it, the female spline part, if you look here, it's almost stripped out too. So we got all the billet shafts in the house for this thing. We're going we're gonna to do the transfer case first and tear it down. Then we're going to do the video on the transmission tearing it down. Because we've got a lot of cool stuff going in this thing right here too. So let's get this thing apart. Now we're going to remove our vacuum switch right here. This is what locks the front differential in on these and turns the light on. It's a vacuum operated switch when you move the lever on the transfer case it uh, moves the vacuum to a different port to push it the uh, uh, selector on on the front differential pull it out or pull it off so we need to check that too we got our electric speedometer right here I'd be really careful with all this stuff it's the gear fell down in there but this is the electronic part of it here and it has a gear here Let's see if I can grab that gear. There's our gear here. Now we have a plastic gear on the shaft in the transfer case. So. That's that brutus. That thing's stout. I got to get used to that, Trent. See, Annie didn't run, so we're good there. Yeah. She's getting really used to the sounds and stuff at the shop, so she doesn't really take off anymore like she used to. She likes to stay on her feet. Uh, she was just so abused and mistreated that she's really almost got to touch you all the time. But you can see here, the, this uh, hub right here looks really good. The yoke still looks really nice. Scotch brought that up. Scotch brought your friend, guys. Get over and get this tail housing off. Now, right now, we're trying to find uh, some billet pieces for the transfer case because they sell a billet piece here and they sell a billet piece. The piece that goes in the back of the tranny looks just like this that's sticking out. 
and then it locks in here like that. Well, they sell a billet piece here and a billet piece here, and, and it's a double spline. It's got the splines and a locking piece that locks. They cut two grooves in here, and it locks into those two grooves, too, where it gives it, like, dual locking. So we're trying to get a hold of that right now. We have all of our pieces for our tranny, our billet flywheel and all, all the shafts and stuff for it over there. So it's just one piece at a time coming in. So... Trent did a really good job R&R, &R, and he had it out so fast, I was really shocked that he rolled it in here to me. I was going, dang, Trent. Uh -oh. the yep, that's a little tight there. That's a little tight. But you get that extension out there. This thing's got plenty of power. I like it really around all my automatic transmissions and stuff because... Uh, it doesn't damage. I mean, it's easy, lot likely to strip something or anything like that. So, Got our snap ring off here. Now, these snap rings come. They come in the shop all the time. These snap rings break. You can already see they're starting to wear here on the back. So, this is a must. to Always put a new snap ring in there. Now I'm kind of curious to see what everything looks like in here because this is a farm truck. He pulls a lot of heavy weight, trailers, hay, cattle, stuff like that. So that's probably why we're seeing the shafts like that and not counting the rust. When rust gets up inside here, it'll just eat the splines up too. So. My uh, parts guy's telling me that two... 241 DLD, the L stands for light duty. So we were kind of thrown off on that a little bit. So we hey, he has to send me some numbers, and I got to send him the length of this, the spline count, got to measure the length because they make two different lengths. That way we get the right one. So. You don't know how glad I am to get away from air at the table. I mean, it's like night and day different. I don't think I... Can you say that one more time? <laughs> night and day difference? <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. You. I'm glad. I mean, it took a long time. Oh, he got hot. It's almost seized in the... A bore? Yeah, it almost looks like it's got green Loctite on it. And it's hard to say. But do you see that? Yeah. But it took it out with no problem. So, let's go ahead and get this apart here. Now, this does have an oil pump, and that's what you're seeing right here. So, when it's moving down the road, the drive shaft physically turns the oil pump in the transfer case. Now we don't want to see any broken parts or anything like that in here. We want it to just be nice and pretty new. Just change some minor pieces. That way uh, it, it's not costing the customer so much. Because he, he's doing it right. I mean, when this gentleman come in, he said, I want it right, no matter what. Uh-oh. Uh now guys, we talk about overkill on silicone. Every bit of that is silicone. Yeah. Now we got a little plastic piece right here. Looks part of the shift fork insert possibly. But it looks like to me this thing plugged up with silicone. That's why when you silicone these case halves back together, it don't take but a film. But you see how much they got on this thing. It's just oozing everywhere. And what happened is, it plugged up the suction on the pump. Probably took out the shift forks in here. And that's where we're seeing our shift fork pieces right there. So we got this spring right here and we got this little cap. 
sets on here it keeps the spring from wearing into the housing. Now we do have a magnet right here. You can see it's just totally, totally wasted. So. It's like it's growing. Yep. Now some of these transfer cases will have a brass seal right here instead of a, a rubber seal. This is a, a soft, it is still soft right here. We'll take this pump apart and verify if it's still good or if it's wore out or anything like that. Now the seal kit we got will come with a new seal here, a new O-ring here for the pickup tube to seal and pump up. So. The chain still looks pretty good. You can usually tell on these things when you can kind of take and pull them just apart just a little bit like that. If they tighten up, they're good. If you do that and they're still drooping down like here, they're wore out. So. Now, some of these chains, you got to look at them. This is how you identify these. This, if you notice, all the links are the same color, but if you flip it over, you got two purple links. So if you call O'Reilly's or like we have an off-road store here, Emerald Off-Road, that we get all of our uh, off-road parts from and our, a lot of our parts, they'll ask you if it's got two, one, or three purple links in here, and that's how they identify this chain. They might ask you the width of it. They won't ever ask you the length, but they're gonna ask you that there and possibly the width. So if y'all need anything, go to Emerald Off-Road here in Emerald, Texas. Those guys are awesome. Uh, we've been doing business with them guys forever. So this is what we call a synchronizer ring right here. The same thing in a, a standard transmission is in this uh, transfer case. We'll pull this out right here. What this does, it goes back on here like this. Get it? Now let me show you this here too, that way you know how to put this on. You notice you have a flat side here, and you have a pointed side here. This pointed side is designed to so it'll engage into the gear here. You notice this is pointed too. If you put the flat end here, it's just going to butt up against it. It won't line up right. It'll go in but it's not gonna, it's gonna grind and chatter like crazy. But this is what lines them up right here. Now you can stick this on here, it'll go right on. Let me lock it in here. Yeah, that'll go any direction. Put it down on these little log, I call them little dogs. Or small, different builders call them different things and then you can walk that on there. So in other words, when you grab that shifter and you jerk that thing back to lock this chain in, it's gonna push on that ring right there and it's gonna stop that gear from turning so it can lock on, just like that. Okay, right there, it's not locked on. You move the, the ring, it pushes on the synchronizer ring, stops the gear from turning, locks on. Just like a standard transmission, the same thing. When you shift gears, you're moving this collar, you're stopping that gear from turning with the synchronizer ring and locking onto the gear for second, third, fourth, fifth, or, or whatever gear you're going for, the same thing. Now some of them make brass, some of them have like paper on them, like uh, brake shoes and stuff like that, so they do make variations of uh, synchronizer rings. I actually make three stages where there's three rings instead of just one, so there's a lot uh, they've come up with in nowadays. So. Now our shift fork, fork inserts are really thin, almost paper thin, but it did not go metal to metal to do any damage. Now the damage is gonna be, should be right in here. This is the fork that always takes abuse if it starts running low on oil or anything, and this planetary tube because this is where it needs all the oil, guys. So we're gonna see this piece right here is probably gonna be pretty messed up. Now we're gonna pull this off and you can see it melted the inserts out. Now this insert here isn't single like these are. There's three of them. 
This will have a moon shaped ring that goes all the way around on this side, all the way around on this side. Now you notice this hasn't wore out through here at all. It's only on the engagement side. Hey, it's still there. Actually, it's <laughs> Oh, wow. Pieces of it. Yeah, so on, in other man. words, it's pushing it this way to lock it in, in gear. So, but it, once you see it like this, you want to come in here and look at this gear here and make sure you ain't got any odd wear on the end of this tip here. Because it's kind of shaped like a peak of a house, the end of the house. It has to come over that. And uh, if you wear the edges off on the edge of the roof of the house, it will come over. Well, this still looks pretty good. Don't see any odd wearing like that. The fork is wore out. Now the new fork they send me might be aluminum or it could be metal. So you never know nowadays when you uh, start looking for this stuff. I could have swore I grabbed a tin. Didn't I grab a tin? I thought I did too. Hmm. <coughs> <coughs> My tools are scattered everywhere. There they are. We've been really busy here at the shop. And we go from one job to another job to another job. And we got jobs in between. So. Like the Corvette tranny, I've already almost got it built. I haven't got the differential tour part. I had to go to a transfer case. And then we'll go to a Dodge tranny. Then we'll come back and do the, the Corvette rear end. So it's just like, we are all over the place here. But we take our time. We get it done. We got all day. There's no hurry. There's always tomorrow. So now we do have a, a single seal right here. Normally, if they did this right, uh, they make a dual seal here, too. You can put one, but we'll stack it with two. That way, we just know it doesn't leak back. So, And they do make a single seal that has dual lips to keep it from leaking, so, too. So, Here again, look at this, guys. If you, The way this transfer case is setting, this is the bottom right here, right? So in other words, all the oil is going to get in here and it's going to drain out this hole right here that's plugged with silicone. See this little port right here? See this plugged hole right here? Right there, I just knocked it off. Look at that. That's what happens when you use too much silicone. We use the heck out of silicone, guys. I'm a true believer in it. When it comes to double sealing things that uh, you don't want to leak, that people ain't ever going to check. Farm vehicles are the worst. I mean, for one, because they don't... They're setting out dirt, they're parking in dirt, they don't ever park on concrete or asphalt, they're never, you're never gonna see it leaking. So if you don't do a daily check, uh, you're never gonna know you're running low on fluid. So. Now the, my parts guy wanted to know the thickness of this bearing, the size of this bearing, the length of this shank right here, all that type stuff so we can order parts for this. Get my other screwdriver. Sorry about this. Coming back through. But we don't want this planet to be bad. This will cost the customer a lot of money if we have to replace it. So right now we're not looking at a whole lot of money. But if this thing here is bad, you're talking about a $600 bill right off the bat. You want to look for any darkened pins. You want to look down here where this gear locks in here. And make sure we don't have any issues there. You want to look in here for any type of, get my glasses on real quick and just kind of look at this a little bit better. Now you can see how shiny that is right here. Mm -hmm. That's from it grinding just a little bit. Is that wore out yet? No, it's not. It's just like I said, he's probably putting it in gear moving. Uh, too fast going down the highway, not really being at a stop. I mean, these don't have to be at a stop to go into gear, but it, it just makes them a lot better, guys. Slow down, give some things to time to lock in and stuff like that instead of 70 mile an hour down the highway. So it's going to take a little bit. We're going to get on the phone, get some other parts coming. That way we have everything here for tomorrow. It's going to be exciting, guys. we got a lot more coming, so stay tuned. Hey, don't forget to subscribe, though.
Ja aus Taiting.